everyone <coughs> i would invite mr dc pande chairman of the session technical session 1 mr dc pande is irs e of 1987 batch an electrical engineer presently working as principal executive director in rail vikas nigam limited ministry of railways he is having more than 33 year experience in the infrastructure and industry he has also spent 3 years in project of modernization of railway system in uk i welcome mr dc pande on the dais mr pande please mr gp kumabat he is former ed ipgcl and ppcl delhi genco he is an electrical engineer and mtech in the computer science also a law graduate and pg diploma in industrial safety i would like to invite mr kumar ji on the dais please i would like to invite sri chetan srivastav ji principal chief safety officer er ministry of railway government of india please come on the dais he will be delivering the lecture on role of artificial intelligence in crew counseling and skill development a very hot topic nowadays because artificial intelligence is uh, there in every part of our life so i would like to invite mr chetan srivastav on dais mr chandan sahay agm ntpc mr chetan sahay i would like to invite mr chandan sai gm nt agm ntpc please come on the dais sri lokesh rasaniya ji lead ehs tata projects limited of new parliament building project new delhi please come on the stage he, he will be delivering lecture on latest and futuristic safety implementation a case study of that i would like to invite sri prabhakar kumar ji please come on the dais he is the chief manager f and s iocl guwahati refinery he will be delivering lecture on study of statutory provisions for process safety management implementation in india mr prabhakar ji please come on the dais i would request mr dc pande ji may please start the session thank you sir thank you sanjeev bhai order do thank you sanjeev uh, good afternoon mic on the good afternoon now we are going to start our afternoon session i welcome all the four speakers on the dais since we have already exceeded our lunch timing by see by half an hour so i am sorry but uh, then we have to sir, adjust sir, this half an hour. we have to adjust this half an hour and i am sorry i will encroach upon your time speakers so kindly be very specific and you have to manage your timings because earlier we have allotted around 20 minutes each but now because instead of three four speakers are there so i will allot 10 minutes to each of the speakers that is 40 minutes and then remaining 5 minutes in summing up and question and answer i will request again all the speakers please be specific and please maintain the timings thank you we can start with uh, the first speaker mr chetan srivastava he is principal chief safety officer is not ready uh, sri chetan srivastava ji principal chief secretary officer er ministry of railways government of india he will be delivering lecture on role of artificial intelligence in crew counseling and skill development mr chetan srivastava ji
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I know after lunch everybody feels sleepy, but I promise you, we'll keep you awake for whatever time is allotted to me. But the time has been cut down, so maybe I am a railwayman. I will have to go by Rajdhani Express Express speed, or maybe the T18, which is coming at 160 kmph now. <laughs> Yeah. So, maybe after within 15 minutes I'll try to finish it up. I'll skip many things. Now, you all know that Indian Railway is a giant uh, organization. Uh, is uh, running almost um, 25,000 trains per day, 15, 12 to 15,000 mail express trains and around 10,000 trains, goods trains. The freight traffic last year handled by railway was more than 1,200 million tons. So we all know that it is lifeline of India. So the most important aspect of the Indian railway is actually the train operation. So, train operations. Train operations is basically, you know, we all know that there is one loco pilot, there is one assistant loco pilot, and there is a guard at the back of the train. These are the three persons who basically run all the trains over 68,900 um, route kilometers, roughly 1,28,000 track kilometers of Indian railways. Mostly now 80% is electrified. So you know that we, we normally railway is criticized for being a manpower intensive organization around 1.3 million uh, people. Out of that I can uh, tell you 2.5, 2.5 lakhs are basically drivers, assistant drivers and guards. Those who are running the show, they are running the trains 24 hours, 365 days, whether it is summer, extreme heat, whether it is rains or it is extreme winter. And you must know, in a locomotive where they are doing their job, they are running the train, there is no toilet, there is no air conditioning. Of course, uh, recently railway has gone into it, around 4-5% uh, cabs, driving cabs will be now AC at present. Similarly, toilets will be even 1 or 2% locomotives will have the toilets. So, Think of it, somebody running the train at 130 kmph in extreme winter and all. So they, they are the ones who are running the um, trains and running the show. Therefore, a lots of stress is given on their training, on their counseling, because one small mistake by a, a loco pilot, the consequences could be disastrous. So the whole presentation is into... Uh, two things uh, is basically lots of uh, stress is given in Indian railways on counselling of the uh, loco pilots and idea of involving the uh, technology is to reduce the uh, human error or the role of the loco pilots itself. So I will be showing only five sli slides having some hy hyperlinks depending on the time I will share some of the things. Uh, but objective of the presentation is you may be knowing few things about railways, but after I share few things, you will have a better vision about the railways and its function. So I will start with basically what are the criteria of uh, crew, uh, what are the concepts of crew counselling.
उसमें जा नहीं रही स्लाइड इज नॉट मूविंग ओके सो बेसिकली दी ऑल ड्राइवर्स और लोको पार्टनर देर परफॉर्मेंस इज वॉच वेरी क्लोजली एंड दे आर कैटेगराइज अंडर डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ए बी सी एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन देअर कैटेगरी वी एनहेंस आइदर दे आर ट्रेनिंग शेड्यूल और काउंसिलिंग सो मेनी थिंग्स आर देयर ये कहां से जाएगा इधर से होगा ये तो मैं नहीं देख पा रहा हूं जो आपको दिखाई दे रहा है या नहीं दिखाई दे रहा हाँ ओके सो द डिसिप्लिन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर देम दे आर बेसिकली दीज लोको पायलट 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 दे आर ओनली दी यूनिफॉर्म सर्विसेज इन रेलवे इफ यू नो एंड दे आर एग्जैक्टली दे आर नॉट यू कैन से दो दे आर अ गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय बट दे आर नॉट दी दे कैन से दे आर ऑन कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल बेसिस ओनली बिकॉज एवरी थ्री ईयर दे आर मेडिकल एग्जामिनेशन इज डन एवरी थ्री ईयर दे हैव टू पास सम रिफ्रेशर कोर्सेज एंड एट डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज दे हैव टू गो अंडर साइकोलॉजिकल टेस्ट ऑल्सो If they fail in the psychological test, they are not allowed to run the train. So, you know, they are basically on contract bill, contractual basis, and the medical examination is again after 45 years of age, every two years, and after 55 years of age till retirement, every one year, every year you have to go through that medical examination. If you fail it, you are gone. Now we judge basically lots of training is given to them. We judge their confidence while categorizing them. what type uh, how much confident he is while driving because that is most important so some of the loco inspectors some of the officers they travel with them along with them during day time night time and they watch them and we have to assess when there is no no man accompanying him how he is driving that is also important to judge his confidence level what kind of tools he is keeping with the locomotive there are so many things you can just see the pictures it will give you an idea now most important is the reaction time how he is reacting while he is driving the train and at the same time whatever irregularity he finds in the section he has to report it if you see that that is most important because next following train might be affected we have seen that even a rail fracture has occurred first train will pass with 200% possibility it will pass nothing will happen but the second train may get affected so important thing is whenever he find something um, unusual sign anything unusual he is supposed to report it back to the control so that remedial action is immediately taken now some of the while categorizing them some of the private personal things are also judged which is normally not done in other government organization or even in the railways for other category of officers and staff It is only for the running staff, logo pilot. We have to see that. Let's. One thing I can tell, just show you. We have seen some of them have having a drinking habits. So, drunken driving is definitely you know. We do this kind of counselling. If you see this picture, we share such kind of messages uh, with them. If you see that, this is a one scene from Superman movie. Superman himself is saying uh, he is refusing to drink. while on duty so that is how we counsel the loco pilots and all when a superman is refusing to uh, drink on duty you are just a human being their history is also very important whether they are newly promoted what kind of other their habits whether they were involved in earlier accident and all now i go to the next part of the counseling this is the categorization next is what are the areas where we counsel them i will come in the end what is the role of technology in reducing this burden uh, of counseling and so many things safety aspects are also discussed with them is just a boring thing um, there are so many circular so many rules and all we have to but keep on telling them it is a boring thing we try to innovate certain things like this 
if it is possible wherever possible we try to innovate things and educate them then uh, yes this is i'm coming to one of the most important uh, uh, aspects of driving technique in this driving technique you can see important aspect is sectional knowledge the section where he is driving the train i'll just uh, share a very small story before i go into depth showing us sachin tendulkar's photograph uh, i have read one article where amir khan had shared one of the story when he was sitting uh, by the side of sachin tendulkar who was not playing a match was injured he was sitting in the same stadium and india was playing against australia and amir khan was casually asking him now what kind of bowl the bowler will come up and uh, according to amir khan out of six four balls sachin sitting outside the ground in a pavilion or somewhere in the uh, audience able to predict he is going to bowl outside the off stump he now this man is going to bowl a bouncer so you can see there are so many players have come and gone but why he is sachin tendulkar because it is all the knowledge sectional knowledge what i am telling you he knows he he is prepared in advance that what kind of ball is going to come so therefore whenever you are running a train or running a even a car if you know the route well you will be able to drive very well if you do not know the route it will be very difficult now i can just share one more thing recently there a um, cyprus mystery one of our leading businessman died and you all know that there was one uh, lady doctor who was on the driving seat you can see that the what kind of speed has a impact on the driver's vision so i can tell you in that case also somebody has told that while approaching a bridge there was an old bridge and there was a new bridge and maybe there was a hitch whether to take the new bridge or old bridge so that is what i am saying it's sectional knowledge if if the driver is knowing in advance that there are two bridges which bridge to take which bridge is better he would do a better job and he will avoid all kinds of accidents so therefore sectional knowledge we give lots of uh, stress in railways to see that they this is a normal thing uh, lots of technicalities are here they are taught so many things how to uh, encounter if any trouble is occurred in the locomotive or any other things 10 minutes 10 minutes okay so i'll just skip uh, two three slides and then i'll come to role of technology this is a i'll just share this is how we teach them they are supposed to do the brake field test before starting their train in the first opportunity available opportunity they are supposed to this is a kind of uh, we teach them they pass the signal at danger it is not to be done because if you pass the train at a danger you will end up in trouble i'll skip these things now important thing is feedback as i told you they are supposed to give lots of feedback so that rectification is done and we also stress to spend uh, the officers and supervisor to spend time with the uh, loco pilots almost 10% of the trains 5 to 10% of the train in the night time you will find that some officer or some supervisor is accompanying the driver in his cab so apart from that also they are supposed to uh, spend time and uh, discuss what are their troubles we also tell them see every system has certain paradoxes you know everywhere in the life um, you can see the one cartoon also there is another famous i'll share this is a grandfather's paradox if you know that if somebody goes into the past it is possibility that he will kill his grandfather so that there is a complexity paradox he will now be born so same kind of thing there are always there in the system so we also make them aware about the paradoxes in the Sorry, railway I, system Sorry. operation chetak i am telling you we used to run many places we are running the good trains at time table it is difficult because our main uh, priority is mail express trains chetan it is better if you concentrate okay. on the technology part i'll come to come to last point particularly on the artificial okay. intelligence now i'll come to the role of technology see how role of technology has minimized the drivers miseries and allowed him to run the train 
without any failure. I can share the locomotives. Some uh, 20 years, 25 years back, used to be very conventional locomotive. Now every locomotive is a microprocessor-based locomotive. So whatever activity he does on the locomotive, everything is recorded. Even if suppose he is trying to take the locomotive in the reverse direction, when he uh, applies that reverse uh, reverser, there will be an announcement to make him aware, yes, you are now going to, if you take the traction, you will go back, something like that. We have simulators where the complete section is simulated. In a training school, there are simulators where he can have a feeling of driving a locomotive or the train in particular sections. So different sections, um, geography is fed into the system and they do, uh, they basically run the train in the training school itself. Route relay interlocking, I tell all the, lots of electronic has come now, complete yard, everything, signaling, complete thing, thing is now electronically based and it's interlocked. Data logger is one of the things which records the signal aspects and many other activities which we can also later on when we download the thing, we can uh, analyze what kind of what um, signals he has passed and uh, what um, <coughs> speed. So many things are there. Now, uh, CMS is the crew management system where completely uh, they are uh, booking different trains and all their rest. They get uh, two nights in every fortnight at home. Remaining time, they are always moving outside. So now, I'll come to the most important three, four items, which are latest developments. This is multi-section uh, multi digital Excel counter. Earlier, we used to have uh, complete yard track circuiting. And uh, on track circuit based, there will uh, si signaling was based on track circuit. But track circuit is a problem because lots of wiring is there. Lots of uh, rails have to be cut and uh, glued joint have to be given, which also fails. So now, thing has come this digital Excel counter, where every Excel, when it passes that particular digital Excel counter, it counts. So that if some, some hundred Excels have gone into the section, unless it has come out from other end, it will not allow any other train. It will, it will not allow signal to go to green. Two, three minutes. <laughs> this is a Fox, Fox Pass device. Fox Pass device. Uh, during fog, you must have heard there have been many accidents earlier, but now we have fog pass. It is a GPS-based device um, installed in the locomotive cab, which um, tells the driver in advance. Announcement will be made that, yes, signal is supposed to come, level crossing is supposed to come, so that he becomes aware and he has to be, if he is not able to see the signal aspect, he has to stop the train. There is a Vigilance control device inside the locomotive where if the driver is not active for 76 seconds, if he is not doing any operation, automatic brake application will be done. And these, uh, this is end of train telemetry. This is also now, this will um, remove the uh, guard. In place of guard, if you utilize this thing, only driver and the and in place of a guard, there will be one end on uh, train telemetry system will be there. They are all GPS control. So whatever role of the guard is there will be electronically done. And another last item, which is, I think, of interest to everybody. Uh, you must have heard about Kavach project. So Kavach is nothing. But again, uh, this is a wireless communication between a station locomotive and uh, near the signal again there will be one equipment so three equipments together would be um, communicating uh, wireless and depending on the signal aspect uh, no train can pass red signal and uh, right now 1155 route kilometers in indian railway in south central railway has been provided with kavach and uh, 3000 another 3000 kilometer uh, order has been placed, maybe in next three years will be done. Hopefully by, you can see by 28 or 30, another six to eight years, you com complete Indian railway will be uh, done with Kavach. So you will not see any accident on account of uh, human error. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chetan Sri Vastav, for such a wonderful presentation on the role of artificial intelligence in crew counseling and skill development. May I now invite Mr. Chandan Sai, AGM Safety, NTPC. Please come on, the, uh, and he may be delivering the lecture on innovation and safety in the NTPC area and others' uh, life. Thank you. Kindly put on the presentation, please. Mr. Sai, the time allotted is 10 minutes. Yeah, I'll please stick to that. To yeah, that. the moment I start, I'll yes. stick to that. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Chandan Shahi, Head of Safety uh, in NTPC Khargon. So I'll begin my presentation and uh, the focus will be on safety uh, and innovation. Next slide, please. Uh, brief about uh, my past station. NTPC Khargon is India's first ultra supercritical power station having the highest efficiency of 41%, which is 4% more than a conventional one. And uh, just before the lunch, you must have heard my college principal, Professor P.B. Sharma talking about sustainable development. So gentlemen and ladies, this is the sustainable development. With less amount of coal, we are generating the same amount of power. Next slide, please. So the first in this series. First of all, we have the acronym SAFETY. And what exactly it is? It is sustained accident free environment throughout the year and how do we achieve it we achieve it on the right hand side you must be saying we search hazard we analyze risk we find cause we eliminate the cause we tell others that we are safe and the graphic which you are seeing here is a safety temple which has been installed right at the entrance of the power plant so the workers, before going to their respective workplaces, they offer their prayers to Lord Vishkarma, whose idol is established here, and they take a pledge of working safely, removing unsafe conditions, and not indulging in unsafe acts. And ladies and gentlemen, you must be seeing there's a suggestion box placed at the back corner, and whatever their creative suggestions are there, they write it in a piece of paper and drop it. And on a monthly basis, we evaluate and reward them. Now, the best safety practice is the elimination of manual intervention. Since 2017, when the construction began in our power plant, we have been resorting to use of mobile elevated working platform and this has reduced the risk, uh, the ma uh, risk of manual intervention and the risk has been reduced to as low as reasonable possible. Otherwise, the alternative would have been to erect a scaffolding and putting the workers at height, which would have entailed the hazard of fall from height. So right from the beginning, we have used this uh, method of mobile elevated working platform. Now, I have included a case study uh, which was there in the construction period. Before, the four workers were working at a height for fixing a single bracket with the help of a pick and carry crane. And this particular activity involved a lot of potential risk. So a lot of uh, brainstorming was done by me, my team with LNT, which is uh, our EPC partner. And suitable method of reducing the risk was devised, which comprised of fixing of eight brackets by welding to the girder beam at the ground itself, and then the total beam was lifted with the help of crawler crane. By resorting to this method, there was no uh, chance of putting the people at height and entailing the hazard of work at height by the workers. Thus, the manual intervention involved was totally eliminated, and we ensured a foolproof safety. Now, 
and uh, again uh, this is on the same lines uh, we have a 6 meters aerial working platform to replace the defective lights we have a aerial working platform and during the maintenance in the overhauling activities we extensively use man lifter you can see the right uh, the picture on the right side this is a place where if a person falls from height, that can be catastrophic. So we don't uh, put our people at this place. Instead of that, we deploy a man lifter. Person goes there with a the proper safety harness, and he anchors it and does the job in a very safe manner. Now, for a engineering control measures, what we have is before doing any excavation activity, we need to have an excavation permit and for this very purpose we have purchased a cable locator and uh, to eliminate the risk of cables being cut or underground water pipelines, hydrant lines being uh, destroyed, so we extensively use the cable locator and once we are satisfied that there are no underground cables or the lines, we give us green signal for carrying out the excavation activity. Then. My professor was talking about road safety incidents. 1.6 lakh people die each year in our country. And I am remembered of the fact that just two weeks back, our honorable minister had given in a paper, there was a cutting that most of these incidents are because of the faulty DPRs. For taking care of these road safety incidents, we have done two things. First of all, we have used the artificial intelligence. We have put up two speed sensors with camera and each piece costs more than three and a half lakhs and what it does is irrespective if you drive at 10 kilometers or at 70 your four freeze frames are captured and clearly your uh, registration plate is captured and for habitual offenders what we do is we resort to public shaming and uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, I am pleased to announce that since 2019, we have not had a single first aid incident. What to talk about the higher level of incidents. And then, secondly, what we have done, we have installed 36 numbers of speed breakers in a small compact plant like NTPC Khargot. I mean, I invite all of you to visit our plant because I can guess that no other plant in NTPC has so many speed breakers. This is done because we generally care for the health and safety of our people. Then it is said, my father was an army officer. I used to see him practice uh, in all these mock drills time and again. So I once asked him, so the statement what he gave is, if you sweat more in peace, you bleed less in war. Based on this philosophy, every month we carry out mini mock drill in our chlorination plant. Since 2019, we have not had a single case of chlorine leakage. And we have absolutely foolproof systems as far as chlorine leakage, arresting is concerned. We have a neutralization pit, we have a, a, the absorption system. And by mini mock drills, we test each and every sensor by generating chlorine gas, by reacting the HCL with the bleaching powder. And a cross-sectional team of safety mechanical maintenance, C&I, off-site maintenance, they are involved in this mini mock drills. And, you know, there is no substitute to proactive management by walk around. You cannot manage safety by sitting in your office. So, as my, myself as head of safety and my safety officers, we chalk out a program. Despite we are having 12 safety stewards, they do their own job, but we have a plan every day to follow. So at the beginning of the month, we prepare a safety plan that on particular day, we are going to check each and every vehicle. Particular day, we are going to have a round of boiler. Likewise. Shai, your yeah. time is getting out, please. Yeah. Two minutes, you please. Yeah. Then uh, there were spate of incidents uh, of flashover. So what uh, NTPC Khargon has done is the first uh, plant in NTPC to have a HT and LT simulator. It is basically having control supply, not a life supply, but it is a tool to teach workers and engineers how to rack out and rack in, how to normalize or isolate electrical supplies. Then we have standardized modules of safety. There are 23 modules in which workers are taught 
after each three or four slides, there is a quiz question so that you know we can gauge whether the workers are understanding the concept or not. So this helps in ensuring foolproof safety. Then we have prepared a uh, SOP for mass pep talk. What exactly is to be done? We don't go blindly in any pep talk. We have a uh, every week on Fridays we conduct a mass pep talk and we have a proper SOP to follow. And after that we have a safety walk down by our top management. So management believes in leading by example. Then uh, another pr good practice we have is arranging safety skits. By arranging these safety skits, the workers are playing the role and for the benefit of the workers and let me tell you that international project management, uh, we had applied for that award in 2020 and we were in the top four globally and we were uh, quite complimented for this practice of having safety skits on different topics like electrical safety, work at height, confined space, likewise. Then we have a safety framework. The idea behind this is to ensure zero incidents. So we have different 40 plans for each and every aspect on safety. Please, please yeah. Sum up. yeah. So basically then we have of course the BUH monthly safety review. Uh, I'll just, yeah, the, this is important. To address the behavioral aspect, what we have done is in all the elevators and at the safety temple, we play safety songs because you know behavior is one thing which accounts for more than 90% of the incidents. So this needs to be continuously hammered. The workers are continuously aware of this and this really affects their behavior. And another important thing what we have done is we have safety audiobooks on different topics. So a case study of three minutes is presented in each safety pep talk about different aspects of safety like work at height, confined space, electrical safety, hot work. And then what we have is every week, uh, my general manager maintenance is also sitting, uh, he is also testimony to this that the top management does a PTW audit on Wednesday. So today it is being done in our site in which we before announcing anybody, we just go on a surprise PTW audit and see whether the permit to work is foolproof or not. The systems are there or not. And then we have uh, Suraksha brand ambassadors. Some 5% of our workforce is appointed as Suraksha Mitra. Their job is to ensure and propagate the message of safety for, to the larger audience. Then another good practice we have is we have trained 13 numbers of safety scaffolders. They are issued this uh, scaffolding training by National Safety Council and whenever there is an opportunity they are sent to check whether the scaffolding is particularly safe, full, having foolproof safety or not. And then we have developed the safety induction film and most important is whenever there is an accident, maybe that Cyrus mystery incident or any fatal accident in NTPC, we analyze it with the help of fishbone diagram which says what are the deficiencies in the environment, deficiency in the people aspect, measurement aspect, materials, methods, machinery. And of course this is a practice uh, uh, I have uh, come to know from Tata Power. I thank them the safety pouch, safety bag which comprises of gloves, your goggles, earplugs and masks and this we have distributed more than thousand numbers of safety pouch. Please conclude. Yeah, I'm just uh, now with the, all these initiatives, what we have ensured in the last four and a half years is 1590 fatal incident free days and no reportable incident has occurred since last 1505 days and 47.89 safe million man hours. And ladies and gentlemen, we had at uh, the time of construction more than 8,000 workers working in our site and uh, 100, more than 130 near misses have been reported and these are some of the awards. We were the only NTPC station in 2020 to get the International Safety Award because of our best safety practices.
and uh, regularly we participate in different uh, safety conventions like we are doing it here and in CII also we have won uh, the safety award and uh, we were the first project to get the NTPC Swan Shakti safety award of NTPC also. So these are the things and uh, lastly I would like to thank uh, Institution of Engineers India because uh, today I happen to meet my college principal after 32 years and just two days back uh, there was teacher's day. So I am reminded of one saying, Guru Govind Dau Khade, Kake Lagung Paayen, Balihari Guru Aapne Govind Diyo Milaay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Chandan Sai, uh, AGM Safety and TPC Khargon for such a wonderful presentation on innovation and safety. safety. Now may I please invite Sri Lokesh Rasaniya ji, Lead EHS Startup Projects Limited, New Parliament Building Projects, New Delhi. On the, he will be presenting latest and future safety implementation a case study. Mr. Lokesh Rasaniya ji. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I want to thank our organizers uh, to give us opportunity uh, to showcase our best industrial safety practice on new parliament building. Can you connect with this screen? Before I start my presentation, uh, I want to tell one interesting thing about the new parliament building. As we all know, the foundation stone of this building has been laid by Honorable Prime Minister on uh, 12th of uh, uh, December. 2020. Thereafter, we started our work full-fledged on 14th of January 2021. And the first port of this project has been placed on 10th of February 2021, which was exactly the 100 years after the foundation stone has been laid for the old parliament building by the Duke of Connaught. So exactly the time was made when old parliament building foundation stone was laid and also the first port has been laid by uh, our people here. <clears throat> so that is one. All right, uh, because of time constraint, I will take uh, this journey very fast. Please be here with me. So these are statics you can see. First of all, these are the, uh, uh, the statics scope of the work. We have client CPWD. We have scope of uh, building like basement, ground floor, first floor, and second floor, Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha chambers, and art architectural finishes. Also, we are the executing uh, agency, Tata Projects Limited. Built-up area is 65,000 square meters. And the stipulated time period is 21 months. Statics, you can see, we have achieved like 18.6 million safe man hours so far, in spite of the complexity of the structure, which definitely you will see in my preceding slides. This is the area which hopefully you people are going to visit on 9th. I'm inviting well in advance you people. You can see there are the chambers, Lok Sabha chamber, Rajya Sabha chamber, central lounge area. And uh, you can see this is the Raisina road uh, from where we can enter for our offices. Also the material and all are, you know, transported from these roads only. So we have three gates, gate number eight, nine and uh, Harjinder Park block gate. Okay, these are some awards which we got from CPWD and also from the British Safety Council for achieving high standard of safety in the year 2021-22. These are the some major activities. You can see the concrete has been laid, 1.25 cubic meter has been laid within one month because of the time constraint. One month, we have, one year we have poured the 1.25 lakh cubic meter, you can see. Other uh, data is there, reinforcement is like 25,200 meter and so on. These are the equipments we are using on this project. Six number, six tons tower can, three numbers, eight ton tower can, one number and so on. Presently the workforce is like 5,500, but it is varied from 3,500 to 7,000 sometimes. So average will be like 4,500. So my case study related to the, this chamber area as well as central floor area, uh, the total strength, as you all know, uh, 1272 is the total strength of these chambers, where the Lok Sabha consists of eight, triple eight, 
888 sitting capacity, whereas uh, the Rajya Sabha is 384 sitting capacity. Now, the case study, what I am uh, briefing here is like for chambers. Chambers, you know, there are the fall ceiling work, and it is on the great height, like 20 meter, we have to fix the steel structure there, and below that we have to fix the uh, wooden frames and other finishing material and light, fi light fixtures. So working on that height, and transportation of that such a huge structure, MS structure, which is varying from 0.5 tons to uh, 1 tons, is great job for us. It's very big challenge for us, and we, we did that without any incident there. And what we have done, that I want to uh, uh, describe here. So a team was formulated along with architecture team, formwork team, and we have, we have come to the conclusion that uh, available resources like fort lifts, uh, scissor lifts, cherry picker and all are not the feasible solution to lift the MS structure on that height, dead height, and fix it. So what we have done, we, we come to the conclusion to provide a, means, you know, ground-like uh, platform to that height. So we procure uh, our uh, rapid shore structure, I will show you. These are the steel structure, like rafters, purlins, suspender. This has to be, you know, hang on the 20 meter height. So by means of that rapid shore uh, scaffolding formwork system, which is very rarely used in our country, we have provided a very safe working platform all around uh, the area where the work has, to, has been executed. You can see in the preceding slides. So this is a team which is formulated for you know, this purpose. And you can see here the scheme drawing has been prepared to let down our uh, uh, you know, platform. And these are the structure scaffolding which is taking like six ton of uh, load by one vertical member. If I, I explain in the area, so it is three ton per square meter is the load carrying capacity of this platform which made by this. This is the platform which made at the height of 18 meters. So the person who is working there feel very safely. The material which is transported from the roadside to the roof is shifted by means of hydraulic pallets and they are very safely use this platform and do their job likewise. Definitely you will witness this uh, final, uh, you know, the roof part, which I will show in present slides. You see the structure, we have implemented 2A system there. Loading platform is there. And you see the final pictures of the roof. This is the final one. All right, moving forward. By this way, innovative way, the height related hazard has been minimized or you can say eliminated. Improvement in the workflow, save time, material shifting was done very easily. Workmen working with safe and settled mind. Now, second thing which I highlight, uh, the case study of emblem fixing, which you have might be seen in our news that our Honorable Prime Minister has inaugurated very recently. But the pain which our team has taken uh, I, I don't think anybody knows about it. Let me explain to you. So emblem is coming into, I'm coming because of time constant, I'm coming directly to the picture. You can see nine ten of this emblem can't be shipped directly by means of tower crane or the mobile crane. Because of the complexity of the structure and the area available at that place, it is very difficult to take. So what we have done, we have asked the supplier manufacturer to bring it into pieces. So the different pieces having 1.8 to 2.8 tons of load. Now we have the tower cram which is maximum capacity of you know 2.4 tons at the lifting point. Now it is very difficult to lift 2.8 ton of the to lift that particular member by 2.4 ton uh, capacity at that point. So what innovation we have done you can see here from red part, this has to shift to there. This, this is a tower crane. So what we have done, you can see by this picture, we removed the one section out of 70 meter zip, 20 meter section has been removed by the tower crane to reduce the load, dead load of the tower crane. Also, we, uh, we removed that one trolley, one trolley uh, of wire ropes by four, four fold two, we make it to the two fold. So 100 meter wires weight has been reduced. So Consequently, the lifting capacity of the tower crane has been increased and the, 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 the capacity become 3 ton at the point of lifting. So that way, it is very easy to lift the 2.8 ton of that particular section. And this work was done very safely and you have, you have witnessed that the inauguration 
our prime minister has done. Mr. Asanya, uh, although it is very interesting, therefore I give you three minutes extra, although you have already... Uh, definitely, sir, I will show the yes, pictures sir. only, only pictures. <laughs> it is very interesting, but three see... Three minutes. <laughs> All right, sir. So, again, the uh, environment part, I want to, you know, tell you something. We have the tower can, uh, the mist, uh, the spray mist system has been fixed from the tower can, which is the first project where we are using. Nowhere in the India we are using such sort of things. Even in Europe also, when our some Britishers come to visit our site, they are surprising that how you people are, you know, controlling the environment. And that is the reason during our all work is shut down in Delhi NCR. We are the one we are working there. And you see the graph, where you can see the graph, which will show you. Okay, atmosphere inside the site premises is far better uh, as compared to the city atmosphere. Note of this, three meter and nine meter height, we put the sprinkler systems. Also, we have monitoring system on site. Also, we have our own system to monitor the environment and third party. This is the graph. The Mandir Mark is a benchmark where the government is, you know, taking readings. When we compare this, you can see our 14.9% better environment inside the site premises as compared to city environment. Very last time, but again, I am trying to show. These are some of the uh, application-based uh, our uh, initiative which we are using to avoid the paper uh, and save the time. By one click, we will get the comparison between everything what we are doing. This is the AI-based system by which we can, you know, detect the person who is not wearing the helmets. We put our this uh, vibration system near the old parliament building. If there is more vibration, we will stop the job. These are the smoke towers we have placed. These are the genset, which is driven by gas. This is the trees you might be seen to, when you come there. See the condition, but we saved these trees, which is on the central courtyard area, and see the condition. Now it is more greener as compared to the initial stage. Sustainability, we are doing a lot of things, but time is not permitting me. So I'm just in the in nutshell, 100% LEDs, we are using M cent in spite of reverse end. And uh, also, uh, you can see, I mean, a lot of initiatives are there as, as far as this, our sustainability aspect is concerned. I want to finish uh, two more slides. These are the, some good practices you can see here. We are using West Ply for our uh, posters and all, different tanning mock deals. We are using the grinders, which is suction based. Motivations Award. We are using this waste concrete for making the power, power blocks and bricks, protection of the trees, fogging, sports events, delegates coming, you know, frequently on site. This is the final uh, pictures of our project. If you permit one more minute, sir, I will show you what this last slide. Can it be done? Last, last slide. Time to interact with you, but it's a ninth also. All right, then. On ninth also, we are visiting your. Okay. Validation of the thing. Okay. Chal raha hai kya? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sri Lokesh Asaniya Ji, Lead EHS Startup Projects Limited, for such a wonderful presentation on new parliament building projects. May, may I now invite Sri Prabhakar Kumar Ji, Chief Manager FNS, IOCL Guwahati, for the presentation of a study of statutory provisions for process safety management implementation in India. Uh, Mr. Prabhaka Kumarji, please. Uh, 
dignitaries on dais and of the dais, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Prabhakar Kumar. I am head of Department of Fire and Safety at IOCL Guwahati Refinery. First of all, I am thankful to Institution of Engineers and my organization who has given me the opportunity to uh, discuss this important issue of structural provision of process safety management in India and practice followed in worldwide. As we all know that uh, in process industry, process safety management plays a vital role and lots of accidents have happened uh, in the India and around the world due to failure of process safety manager, management. So I have done the, this study. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, give a brief introduction of my organization, Indian Wild Cooperation Limited. Uh, it is a, a Fortune 160, uh, 161 ranked uh, industry in the world fortune listing and our uh, revenue is uh, $54.7 billion for uh, financial year 21-22. Uh, we are operating 11 refineries out of 23 refineries of uh, entire India and our uh, annual capacity is 80.7 million metric tons per annum. And we are the, uh, producing around 35% of national refining capacity of the India. Uh, our Guwahati refinery, since I'm working in Guwahati refinery, this is the first uh, public sector uh, refinery of the country and built with the Romanian collaboration and inaugurated by late, uh, late uh, Pandit Johala Nehru, the first prime minister of India on 1st January 1962. Uh, since last uh, 10 years at our refinery, we, don't, we doesn't have any single incident, accident or fire. Uh, and for our robust uh, safety management system, we have been given several awards. We have recently, we have got Surf Sister Suraksha Puraskar from National Safety Council, Bill Golden Trophy. And this Golden Trophy we are getting from NSCI from last three consecutive years. We also, uh, we have also got uh, International Safety Award with distinction from uh, British Safety Council of India and recently we have also got National Safety Award from uh, Government of India. Since I am going to discuss the process safety management, I have just prepared one slide. What is the management system? The bottom line is that people work in a system and management create the system. So uh, if, if system has to be performed greatly, it has to be owned by the management and people both. We know this is the photographs, we all know this is the tragedy happened in uh, Bhopal on 3rd December 1984. And we all know that uh, this Bhopal, uh, this is a chemical industry and where MIC was uh, released and uh, this resulted in very big uh, accident and there was lots, uh, lots of lives, life were lost. At the time of incident in India, there was no process safety management like of concept was available. Neither our safety requirement prevail uh, was addressing the process safety management, neither best practices was available. So the uh, technology which was uh, not uh, acceptable in outside country, developed country, was pushed in our country and we have started uh, using this technology. And th since there was no process safety management, uh, no safety requirement, uh, this incident has happened. But after this incident in 1987, Factory Act was amended. There was many statutory bodies, many rules and regulations were added, uh, amended. But still in 2020, uh, these are the photographs you must, you all people are maybe knowing that these are the photograph of Bisaka Patnam. There one incident has happened in LG polymer uh, plant, uh, which resulted in the casualty of 12 uh, person and uh, there was mass evacuation in all the entire area. So after Bhopal in 1983 to 2020, May 2020, there was lots of uh, advancement has taken place in the India. Lots of statutory requirements has came up, but still accidents has happened. There are some of the statutory requirements which are prevailing for process safety management in India. PNGRB Regulation 2020 has just, uh, it was amended in 2020. 
specifies the process safety management requirement and it is the statutory requirement. Factory Act 1941. Uh, this act was amended after the Bhopal incident and special chapter, chapter 4A was included which addressed the some part of process safety management. Manufacture, storage and import of hazardous chemical rules. These rules also address some parts of process safety management in section uh, 4, section 10, section 13, section 14, section 15, section 17 and section 18. Some part of process safety management are addressed in these rules also. Petroleum rule 2002 which is applicable to petroleum industries. Some part of process safety management are also addressed in these rules, uh, this uh, petroleum rule 2002. And one YSD guidelines is YSD 206, which is a guidelines on process safety management, but it is not a statutory requirement. These are some of the guidelines and standards available for process safety management. Although these are not a statutory requirement, but these are the guidelines which we can follow in our process industry to mitigate the process safety management requirement. YSD 206 has issued a guidelines on process safety management. There is one Indian standard, IS 1565, which addresses the hazard identification and risk analysis. International standard, ISO 45001. In this standard, there are also some, uh, they, they have also addressed some part of the process safety management. One guideline is available worldwide, risk-based process safety management by CCPS. It is the US-based uh, guidelines which is available. In this guidelines also process safety management has been addressed. OSAS process safety management, there are 14 elements. This is the statutory requirement of government of USA. And also Canadian chemical industries has also issued the process safety management which has 12 elements. So these are the some of the uh, uh, accidents, uh, major accidents which has occurred in worldwide around the globe and from the, this uh, table we can identify that, that all the, these major accidents has ha happened due to the breach of process safety management. Uh, these are breach was majorly, major was lack of uh, process knowledge to the, uh, to the industry personnel and nearby the community lack of emergency, emergency preparedness, lack of operational discipline, poor hazard identification. These are the major causes which contributed in this, uh, these major accidents worldwide and there were lots of fatalities, lots of environment damage, lots of property damage has happened worldwide. Sir, I have made uh, this comparison chart of statutory requirement of process safety management in India vis-a-vis -vis requirement in the USA. I have taken uh, reference of PNGRB regulation 2020 and OSAS USA PSM element. These both are a safety requirement uh, uh, which can be f which are followed in India and US. Uh, from the table, it is clear that uh, this left side table is uh, talking about PNGRB requ requirement, and this is 14 elements. Right side table is uh, talking about the OSAS USA requirement. This also has a 14 element. So if we compare our process safety management requirement with OSAS requirements, we are at par with USA. There is our system is also our system and safety requirement also matches the requirement with the international standard. So I just would like to conclude that our process safety management standards and statutory requirement which are available in India, it is matching with par with the USA and other world developing uh, industries requirement. The only issues is the implementation part. So I request uh, industries regulator to please look into the issue so that we can implement uh, the process safety management in two sense to mitigate the or the accidents and major incident. And one of the standard is OSD guidelines 206, which has been issued by OSD on process safety management. Although this is not a safety requirement, so it can be included in petroleum 2002, where already six OSD standards are already addressed. If we address uh, this process safety uh, guidelines 206 in petroleum rule, 
then the truly it will be implemented by all stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Prabhakar Kumarji, Chief Manager, FNS IUCL Guwahati Refinery, for a such a wonderful presentation on study of statutory provision for process safety management. May I request Chairman Saab, Mr. D.C. Pandey, to please present memento to our distinguished speakers. May I request Mr. D.C. Pandey to take the session, please. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, we, you have heard the four speakers. I will start from Mr. Prabhakar. He has compared the Indian rules with the Europe rule and US rules. These are good enough, and as he has told that uh, more the enforcement mechanism is to be established. So let me clear that uh, the safety professionals engaged in the industry are supposed to take the work of uh, enforcing agency only. If this is not there, for that only the safety professionals are supposed to report the highest officer of the installation or the board of the directors. So they are, it is their duty to take care of the regulation implementation. If they are not doing, it is failure on the part of them only. Okay, nicely he has compared the things and he has told that uh, for last 10 years there is no accident. But I can say that uh, I will request him or the organizations which have no accident should uh, see for investigation of near miss accidents. Because these are also things which are uh, taking place and we are just ignoring and we are not documenting them in day to day working. So it is my request that uh, we can make it. Mr. Lokesh has shared the uh, Central Vista project details and uh, nicely presented the uh, development and uh, implementation of the project. And out of this, uh, I will say that he, as he has told that uh, the, uh, the logo and the emblem of the uh, India has been installed. But I will say one, two, one minute story that uh, one Konark temple was there. When it was made in the Odisha, the final stage of the temple was not getting completed by the chief architect or chief engineer or whoever you call it. And he was worried about that. You might have heard that story. And after that, uh, he has not went for his home for uh, months together because he was residing away from the Konark temple site. So after that, after long span, there was no communication. His son has went th there to see his father that for quite long he has didn't got any information. And then he went and he again found that his father is worried. And he asked him, why you are worried? But then he said, okay, well, I am finding this problem that I am not able to install the final kalash of the temple. Then he said, Bola, itna sa problem tha. I will resolve it. And he has resolved this problem within hours. It might be the reason that he might have this uh, the pro uh, procedure as Mr. Lokesh has told that uh, nine ton emblem was there and it was uh, put in the parts and then they have taken at the place. But you see, the chief architect or the chief engineer was so embraced that he has gone for some side. That I couldn't do this thing which my son has done for a minute's time. And for that reason, you see, you might have heard that in that Konar Sun Temple there was no puja after that and uh, till now there is no puja on that temple. So we should move in safe manner and improve the things in consultation with the peer group and other people. Another person, Mr. Chandan Shahi has shared number of things in the power sector working and powerhouse working. I would like to see that uh, another, they are, they, he has told that uh, we are using the chlorine drill and other things. There are technological implements are there that I will suggest that uh, they should see alternative of the chlorine because nowadays it is the technological advancement is there and substitute of chlorine is there. We can put them and we can remove this hazard permanently. Other thing he has told that we have made uh, 36 breakers in the township or in the uh, area. But these uh, areas, I have, uh, these speed breakers I have seen, is they, those uh, speed breakers are uh, as per the um, uh, road um, uh, rules and other things. You kindly check it. I doubt that uh, they might be uh, as per this thing. So I will 
I will say that only a thing that we should be continuously in the improving process and um, do things betterment of the things because there are there are speed breakers of this type that people are riding and on motorcycle and people are using mobile or pillion rider is there pillion riders are falling from the uh, on that speed breaker these are causing we are hearing such kind of incidents time and again at different places okay again ptw he has uh, discussed in the ptw also i will like that uh, is it can been uh, taken through the sap or the checklist of the ptw is there so it may be taken up it might be there i am not denying with that but it may be made so stringent that nobody can issue without uh, this clearance of this it is not the ptw where i have seen number of ptws where in which number of checklists there everybody is putting up tick 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 they knows ki kis mein no karna kis mein yes karna and just they are issuing the ptw so it needs to be insured in effective manner okay another thing another mr our colleague mr chetan shivastav has discussed about counseling of crew members i will like that he has made a good presentation number of training number of simulator and other things are there and communication mechanism he has told in the era of this artificial intelligence and machine language they can implement the train driver and train automation can be made that train will not move beyond the requirement of this thing you see our um, this uh, air control traffic system is there in this automation is there you can make trains also so automated because aeroplane is running in the air train is running on the ground we can simply automate them so that it will not cross the desired point or the danger point so that there could be any collision because it is not a big task i think when we are making a cars uh, or in the vehicles uh, without uh, driver then how this cannot be made it is very easily can be made so these things can be improved and uh, finally i will say that uh, because the three pillars of uh, sustainable development are there the society economy and environment we should take care of these things un general body and other things they are uh, time to time Uh, taking care for the, uh, taking care of these uh, things and we should contribute in an effective manner to do better on these accounts a lot many things are other there we can discuss in other sessions also and uh, i will request our uh, session chair person to conclude the session with his comments please thank you thank you mr here we come to the end of the first post lunch session today first post lunch session which is uh, really i thank you all and the success of the speakers is that all of them made us awake particularly having such a wonderful awesome lunch so that speaks about the quality of their uh, presentation so all of them have uh, really done wonderful presentations and uh, i have today let me tell you from this dais that i have the privilege of uh, sharing this session where one of my colleague and my batchmate and of course one of my best friend is sitting next to me sitting next to me mr chetan srivastav so it has been a journey of 33 years in railways we have been together and chetan perhaps uh, his uh, cv or whatever his uh, was not uh, because the velocity of time he who he was we could not uh, tell him about much about him so he has been the divisional railway manager of visakhapatna one of the most uh, important division of indian railways and uh, his track record about the safety has been wonderful there was an accident i don't exactly remember it was just before uh, he took over or after his taking over there was a collision of a tower wagon with a train that was after, after taking over after taking over and uh, that is the you know the genesis of kavach he mentioned about the kavach that is the train collision avoidance system and recently it was in news that our honorable uh, railway minister mr aswani vaishnav who himself is a technocrat and uh, an ex ias officer also you may be knowing him so he has uh, done the trial live trial on one of our division in south central railway which has been very successful chetan also mentioned about the artificial intelligence because 33 years back when we entered the railways 
railway has undergone lot of uh, technological innovations i must say and particularly as chetan mentioned about the crew control vigilance control device that way back in 98 perhaps with the wap oh wap 4 or wap 7 wap 7 locomotives we have introduced this vigilance control device so railway indian railway has been pioneer in adopting the technologies and making and as he rightly mentioned out of almost 30 percent of the total uh, indian railways workforce that comprises of the uh, the crew that is driver assistant driver now we call them loco pilots assistant loco pilots and guards and their life was really really very difficult as he mentioned no toilet no air conditioning but with the technological advancement their life is becoming now more and more comfortable and uh, lot of things are being done on indian railways which he has very nicely outlined and uh, mr kumawat has in fact all he has summed up and mr sahi spoke very well about and i was really surprised that they are doing such a you know wonderful uh, this uh, their efficiency he mentioned about 41% or something like that so that is the real sustainable development with less amount of coal and maximum energy generation then uh, he has given a very right or like our prime minister gives something very you know very very interesting about safety as for the search the hazards then analyze the risk find case then eliminate cause tell others and you are safe that is a safety then annual elimination of manual intervention he just outlined about cable locators then since 2019 there was not even a single accident and then the very interesting thing is suraksha katha sagar i don't know but that must be the compilation of the all safety stories for us yes so that is very nice and then mr lokesh rasania of course that is very interesting and we will have more and more inter more interaction on this uh, on 9th of september day after tomorrow 10 million safe man hours that is really huge and then uh, he mentioned about this was really 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 astonishing that in 21 months 65000 square meters construction that is really wonderful so of course we will have more time on 29th and then mr prabhakar kumar chief manager he told us about the real case study about uh, iocl guwahati refinery <coughs> and then uh, at the end of this session i must thank all of you particularly the speakers thank you so much we have already i think exceeded 10 15 minutes time and anyway thank you so much that is the best parish we could have done thank you thank you mr dc pandey chairman or a technical session one may i now request uh, mr pandey to please pre uh, present the memento to our distinguished speakers as a token of respect uh, mr pandey please uh, may i invite mr chetan srivastav first to please have a memento thank you may i now invite, invite mr chandan sai to please have a moment of moment to thank you sir uh mr lokesh rasaniya ji thank you sir uh, mr prabhakar kumar ji thank you sir may i now invite mr pradeep chaturvedi ji to please uh, bless us 
प्लीज प्रोवाइड द मोमेंट टू अवर चेयरमैन साहब को चेयरमैन साहब एंड सेशन कोऑर्डिनेटर प्लीज So it's now, it's now time for a break, for tea, for 15 minutes. We'll assemble again after 15 minutes.